All right, in this video, I wanted to show something real quick here. The um, cuts along curve tool path, I think sometimes gets underutilized compared to parallel and morph in the five axis tool path. So I just wanted to quickly go over uh, how that works and, and what you can expect from that tool path. Um, Cause I, so let, let's go to the uh, tool paths, multi-axis, and we're just gonna focus on a long curve for this one. All right, and before I go into actually creating the tool path, uh, let's, let's throw some wireframes. So we're just gonna start programming this top surface just so you can understand what, what cuts along curve is doing. And to start with, I'm gonna draw a couple lines. Um, let me do, let me first go to curve on one edge, throw a curve on all four of these edges real quick, just to make it a little easier. All right, so we'll start with a line across this way. We'll do one across this way. And then I'll jump up to a 2D height. Let's see, let's go to zero. All right, and now I'm gonna come back into the top plane here. And I'm just gonna draw a, just a crazy spline here, okay? So let's, let's look at what the results are with cuts along curves. So if we do a long curve, and I'm really gonna be focusing on the cut pattern here and not the tool axis control for now, just to, just to understand the tool axis control strategies are gonna be the same for morph and parallel, really. All right, so we'll pick a lead curve and we'll start with something simple like this one here and drive surface here. For now, like I said, we're not gonna focus on uh, the tool axis control. I'm just gonna leave that at surface and I'm gonna shut off collision control for now. Okay, so what is, what's the result here? Well, if we look, look at this, Right, this tool path, let me shut off quick verify. Right, this tool path, a long curve, I almost think it should be called um, perpendicular to curve because basically it's putting tool path lines perpendicular to that curve we drew down the center. So as you would expect, if we move over to um, that angled curve, we're gonna get a very similar result uh, perpendicular to that angular curve. Right, so I'll get rid of that lead curve. Instead, I'll grab this one and we'll do, I'm gonna open up that step over too, actually. So step over, let's make this 0.5. Just so you get a better result here, or so you can see it better. So now you see with that angled curve that I've got highlighted here, the tool path comes out perpendicular to that. All right, so nothing crazy there. Uh, we'll go back in here and just, just to make this clear, that curve does not have to be um, right on the surface, right? Like if we look at this spline, you know, that spline's up above the surface, but let's see what results we get there, right? Obviously not as pretty because things break down. But you can see it's creating curves that are perpendicular to that wherever it can. And here it's too tight, it can't really get anything in there. This might be a good scenario for tightening up that, that step over a little bit. Let's see what we've got there. That, that's just a little bit too extreme of, of a curvature to that line. But you could see that if my surface followed a rail along that, it would kind of make sense, right? So if I just had a thin river-like surface that followed that curve, you know, I could put it up there and it's going to project down to it. So you can see it's where it, where it can, it's staying perpendicular to that surface and it's gonna collapse and expand, you know, depending on if it's on the concave or the convex side of that, you know, of this line. All right, so let's look at actually applying this to something. Uh, and in this case, I'm just gonna start with this um, this cylinder, and oh, I want to be in three D. Okay, so I'll start with those those two arcs. Let me fatten up this. Let me make this a different color, and 
I'll fatten this up so we can see it a little better. All right, so for now, what I'm going to do is take and draw a line right down the center of a tube. All right, and now tool paths along curve. And keep in mind, you can do this with parallel and morph, exactly what I'm showing here. Uh, so it's nothing, you know, it's nothing new. Selection, and then lead. So now for the lead curve, we're just going to grab that center line. Again, I want to make sure tool axis set to zero. Go ahead and control this off. Okay, so nothing, you know, I could easily morph from this curve down to this curve and get a very similar result. I could do parallel to this curve or to this end and get a very similar result here. But it's just showing that cuts along curve is another way of doing this. Now, an interesting thing we can do here, if I go to 2D and let's grab the center of that, go back in the top plane. You know, as we talked about it, that, that line doesn't have to necessarily reside right on the part, I can do something like this, you know, a ring around it. And now we'll go back into that tool path and select that ring as our drive curve or our lead curve. Okay. And now what you see is gonna stay perpendicular to that. Help if I turned it on. So there we go. So now let's do a quick back plot here so you can see it better. I did a little too fine of a step over. So now it's going up and down and around. Again, not a super difficult, you know, I could put a line on the edge of the center and do a, do a parallel and get a very similar result. Um, but it's it's just a it's a different way of programming. Really, where it really comes in is on a complex cylinder. Uh, like a port, where we could use things like cuts along curve to program that complex cylinder. So just like we did this, we could create a spine down the center of this port and make a cuts along curve to give us a good cut pattern down there, right? So let, let's look at what would be involved there. And I'm going to quickly, let me go into wireframe and curve on one edge. Let me throw a curve on this at oh, 3D. Throw a curve on this edge and throw a curve on that edge. And then um, what I'll do here is I'm going to orient myself in such a way that I'm pretty much perpendicular to both end faces. So see if I kind of tip this over and stay pretty well perpendicular to both end faces, right? Now what I can do is create a plane here. Planes from G view. Let's call this new plane. Okay, so now we're in new plane. I'm gonna set everything equal to that new plane. And so now I'm, I wanna go in 2D and I wanna pick uh, the center of that. I wanna get right down along the center um, thinking the best way to do that, probably if I break this in two pieces, something like that. There we go. Now I can get, yeah, so now I can draw, let me go back in 3D here. I'm just trying to get a center section down here that I can follow, something like that. Now I can link those two together. And actually, I'm, I'm rethinking this because this doesn't lie perfectly on there. Um, if we go in new plane, let's go in the top here. Where did that new plane go? Let's go in G view. There we go. Um, I'm thinking what might be a little easier even is if I just draw some lines on here. And I project these, project these three lines to those surfaces. I think that's gonna work even nicer here. All right, 
So we've got that. That's good. And I'm going to take a couple more 3D lines. Again, there's nothing precise about what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to get a get something that'll kind of give me a way to draw. It'll become real clear here when I do these next steps. I don't we don't need these anymore. All I needed was that line down the center. All right, so now we have those lines. I can do a spline manual. Come right down the center of this port. Screen check out, right? So now I've got a line that walks right down the middle of that port. Okay, if I wanted to create a tool path now, this is where cuts along curve will really shine. So I can use a long curve. I'm sorry for the roundabout way to get there. I was just kind of I didn't really have a plan going in here. I'm kind of spitballing as I go. Uh, so we'll use for our lead curve this time, we'll use this guy and our surface, drive surface. And there's a thousand different ways to get that curve in the center. This is merely just one. All right, now check out that cut pattern on a complex port like that. Now morph will, you know, give you something similar and let, let's try, let, let's just, let's just compare it, compare that real quick. Let's do a morph on there. And I think you'll find that cuts along curve will actually give you uh, a smoother result there. So cut pattern, we'll go pattern from there to there, perfect, drive surface, these, perfect, dual axis control, we'll just leave that on surface for now, and I want to shut off collision control, because I want to just, we're just looking at cut pattern for this. Well, let's see what the result morph gets, and it might be pretty good. I'm just showing you the, you know, the different ways of, of creating, you know, of using a long curve. It's, it's generating here. So there we go. So you can see, you know, Morph gives a pretty decent result, but see how it kind of breaks down up on the top here? Let's look at a long curve. See what a long curve looks like there? So there are places where a long curve can, can really shine. Um, and, you know, finishing a tube is one of the best, but there's also places, you know, where things like, you know, a halo ring around a certain part uh, can really give you really good results there. So it's good to just have that in your in your toolbox to be able to, to be able to use.